another thing I wanted to call out. Um, I know this was three days ago now, but uh, we just hit the 11 year anniversary of the 2011 championship team. Wanted to quickly touch on that again. Uh, just a reminder in case some people, whether they're newer Maverick fans and didn't experience that or whether it's been a minute, you know, 11 years precisely, and they've uh, forgotten just a little bit, just to put it in context. Dirk in that 21 game playoff run averaged 27.7 points per game, 48.5% shooting from the field, and 46% from three. He also shot 94.1% from the free throw line. Game one of the Western Conference Finals against Oklahoma City's big three, Durant, Westbrook, and Harden, he dropped 48 points on 12 of 15 shooting and a ridiculous 24 of 24 at the line. It was probably Dirk's single greatest game of his career. Uh, OKC through Serge Ibaka, a great defender at him, who at the time was averaging like a league league leading like two and a half blocks a game. Uh, Kevin Durant, Tabo Cephalosha, Nick Collison, Kendrick Perkins, Nazir Muhammad threw all of it at Dirk. Didn't matter. Didn't matter who they threw at him. He was just feasting, taking their lunch money and just dropping buckets. Didn't even matter if he was falling over, shooting behind his head. I mean, absolutely. It was it was all part of this basically two month long playoff run in Dirk's career in which he was the greatest player on the planet. It might have only been two months, but it was the two months that mattered most because he ices his legacy and forever uh, etches his place in NBA lore. Um, that's I, I had to give love to the to the finals run into the blown championship because Every every year I revisit that in some capacity, whether it's just kind of reading up on stuff again or watching old highlights, and I'm never not amazed at just how incredible that. Yeah, they went through some some dogs. It wasn't like they went through some easy wins there. You had a lot of talent that they beat through, and like you said, that uh, 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 Dirk was at his finest mm -hmm. uh, when they needed him most. And you know, it just uh, makes you excited that you know. What you had in Dirk, you're always transferring to uh, hopefully a run with Luca. Um, and it's already starting with these Western Conference finals. And he's already in a short period of time already um, been playoff bound. And now I feel like uh, it's now it's taking uh, time to take another step, DDP. Um, you know, you got to those uh, playoffs. You banged with top seeds in the L.A. Clippers. You come back, you surprise some people. You come back with this great trade in Christian Wood. Who knows what happens after that? But I like the way the, uh, the, the direction is headed. And one thing I can say the difference from the Mavericks to the Cowboys right now is something like this. We just saw what happened with the Cowboys, right? Mm -hmm. two, two, exact, two teams that are in the same area but in different situations. You have a situation with the Dallas Cowboys get beat up by the San Francisco 49ers. And what do they do? Do they jump out there and say, hey, yeah. We got to get better. We got to do this. We got to do that. No, we'll let go of major players and we'll just kind of wait on it, go with the draft and we'll and we'll do it this way. Polar opposite, in my opinion, from the Dallas Mavericks, they get to the West Chicago finals. Nobody expected that. And they don't sit there and sit on their hands and say, hey, man, we got to West Chicago finals. Let's pat ourselves on the back and let's be good. No, they said, no, we got to taste that. We want more. So let's go ahead and get aggressive and let's make things happen. And I think that could be the difference from the Dallas Mavericks possibly getting another championship before the Dallas Cowboys. It, it's certainly possible because uh, Dallas, the Mavericks, um, you know, they, they kept doing the run it back thing year after year here. And they weren't really taking steps forward. Like Luca was taking steps. Jim Brunson took a forward this year, but they had to kind of luck into the ejector button on the, the Porzingis era working as well as it did getting the, getting the two. They got really Dinwiddie um, for about 23 regular season games. And then obviously throughout the playoffs with them. And for about half that time, he was sensational. About the other half of the time, he was pretty bad. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he still brings things that build rules on the team and that they needed. So it made sense. But like, I think they looked at it honestly. And we, we talked about this when they got bounced in five. We're like, OK, he got to the West Finals. That's that's something that's going to help appease them getting a, a deep playoff run and upsetting the teams that they upset being picked against in every series. But he didn't get so close that the front office is looking at this content saying, yeah, just run it back, man. Just a little bit better health. Imagine if we had had Hardaway or imagine if he'd had a full season with Dinwiddie in them. It's going to be different. No, no, no. They got just close enough to appease Luca and tell ownership in the front office, like, you know what? We uh we can't be satisfied with this. We gotta find that next because 
Hawks tried running it back largely after they went to the Eastern Finals. They took a big step back. This, so I think Dallas has the right mindset, and they're showing like maybe they can learn and understand that you can't just keep running back the same squad year after year and hoping that role players who are already extended past their expected ceiling are going to somehow find another level. Maxie's not going to get better. He's not like right. He'll, he'll he's reached have, his, he reached his peak. Oh yeah, he and I think he did two years ago. I mm-hmm. think he's been asked a little better, but he's, his last couple of years, he's been having back issues and the mileage is catching up with him. I, I don't think you can keep saying, yeah, this is like a, a more, not centerpiece, but one of our key guys that we're keeping around for a long time to play this major role for us. You, you have to adapt. And I think this is showing a willingness to do so. I'm intrigued. I want to see what they do next. And hopefully this era can be as prosperous as, as the past. Yeah, man. So I, I, like I said, I, I like where it's headed. I'm excited about where it's headed. And like you said, I want to see more. I ain't gonna lie. It's wet, wet the appetite a little bit to see what uh, these Mavericks have in store. And let's see what these Cowboys do. You know, me and you both talked about this. Hey, we just keeping it real. The excitement ain't there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're just, hey, let's see, you know, there's been too many disappointments, too much talk. And honestly, I just feel like it's really just still going to be the same thing this year with the Cowboys, no matter how much they hype it. Uh, yeah, they got the talent, but it, obviously we see it's more than talent um, that gets you to a Super Bowl and a championship. So uh, we'll see. 